Yo, yo, yo. What's good with it? It's the homie Mac. Music, art, culture, knowledge. Reporting live from the Dogon. Uh, each one, teach one. Peace and love to all. Um, I need y'all to do me a huge favor. Hit that like button. I need the algorithm to feel me, man. Hit that like button. Um, subscribe. Tell, tell, tell all y'all folks about it. Tell your peoples. Uh, let them know about uh, Mac TV. Tell them to subscribe to you to uh, <coughs> the YouTube channel 82 Kings. We out here, man. Music, art, culture, knowledge. Um, I've been um, uh, this. You know, this is first off. This is a session of Mac minutes, and a lot of the Mac minutes have been uh, pretty political. You know what I'm saying? Pretty political uh, social commentary. But with this one, um, I want to get back in my hip hop bag. Uh, <laughs> this this Mac minute session will be entitled. And you'll see why I'm laughing in a second. Some people might think this is funny. Um, this Mac Minute session is enti is entitled Nas cannot pick good beats for shit. Let me say that again. Nas cannot pick big nah. Woo, my tongue. Nas cannot pick good beats for shit. Um, anybody that knows me knows that Nas and uh, my, my favorite rappers are Tupac and Nas. Um, I think Nas. Um, irrespective across the board, is a genius with, with his with his penmanship, uh, with his writing. Definitely one of the best one one of the best to ever do it. And I would say th that's all inclusive, all all musical genres, um, even outside of music, just literature in general. Uh, Nas is a very uh, celebrated celebrated writer. He's a very prolific writer. Um, Heck, I got a Nas poster right here. Uh, so this, what I'm saying is not uh, an affront to Nas. It's not a diss to Nas. Um, Nas, I remember as a shorty, I went, uh, who is it? When uh, Prince De Jour was on Rap City, it was a while ago, like in the 90s, like 94, 95. Uh, I remember the first time I watched Rap City and I saw uh, It Ain't Hard to Tell. Nas is single. It Ain't Hard to Tell. Um... I used to run home to try to catch it, hoping that the video that, that video hadn't already went off, that I'll catch it before they show it on uh, Rap City. Uh, but yeah, Nas, again, bar for bar, it's not many that are seeing uh, Nas's pen game. Uh, Nas is, uh, can't, say it, can't say it enough, can't stress it enough, Nas is an amazing writer, amazing writer. Um, but I had a conversation with one of the homies, and he was like, you know, Maurice, um, you know, Mac, you, you, uh, you love Nas, man. Nas is like your guy. Like, you know, you, you always talk about how, you know, Nas is penmanship. But he said, you know what, Mac? Nas can't pick good beats for shit. And at first I was kind of like, damn, is it really, is it really that bad? I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, I had to have a honest conversation with myself, an objective conversation. And I will say this, um, in compare, I don't, I don't, I don't even want to mention Jay-Z, it was, it's almost like Jay-Z and Nas are the, the, the yin and yang to one another. Um, but I, let me say this, Nas has had 13 studio albums, five compilation albums, uh, one EP, over 79 singles, Four mixtapes, one group album. Um, I would say, and, I, and I'm just saying all those things just to accentuate his body of work. Um, I'll say this. I think... <laughs> I think Nas's beat selection is questionable. It is questionable. Um, like I said... Uh, 13, he's had 13 studio albums, 13 solo albums. Um, within that 13, we are going to count um, Lost Tapes. Lost Tapes 1 and Lost Tapes 2. Um, I've, I've met different engineers that have, have worked with Nas, and I've met people in the industry who have been around who have been around Nas' circle. Um, I, from what I've been told, Nas is very eclectic in a way. Um, I heard that... <laughs> 
And I know some of y'all gonna say, man, that's BS, man. This dude just can't, he doesn't have a good ear for beats. It is what it is. Uh, but I heard he does not, like, sonically, he just hears beats different. So, um, I think Nas is very, I remember I, I had made a joke and I said Nas is like, uh, almost like Rain Man, like he's just, he's so, it's almost like he's an idiot savant, he's so smart, he, he's, uh, he's so smart he seems dumb. Sometimes, uh, <laughs> you know, people who are very art artsy, artistic like that on the spectrum, um, they're just very abstract. And they don't process things the way most people generally generally would. Um, uh, so, what the engineers of engineers that I've known that I've worked with him, they've just pretty much said, like, look, man, he it just hits different with him. He processes beats differently. And I was kind of like, eh, okay, maybe I don't know, maybe he's just super artistic, and you know, he's just in a whole other stratosphere. I don't know, um, but I've heard that he just sonically. Things have a different appeal. And let's be honest, we all have our own bias within our ear. Um, I know people who cannot stand West Coast production. They can't stand uh, Battle Cat. They can't stand Dr. Dre. They can't stand DJ Quick. Um, I know cats who, uh, they can't stand East Coast production. They don't like DJ Premier. They don't like, uh, who are some other people? Um, they don't like Pete Rock. They don't like Large Professor. Uh, they don't like Hitmaker. He's not from New York. But, you know, they don't like Hitmaker. He's not East Coast. Um, I know guys that don't like Southern production. They hate Trap. They don't They don't like Metro Boomin. Um, they don't like Zaytoven. They don't like uh, Shawty Red. Everybody has a different ear for how they process beats and production. Um, I will say, uh, I will say this, though. I also heard that... Um, Nas circle, and I don't know. I don't know this for sure. This is hearsay. I heard his circle um, is very. Uh, they're 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 pretty much considered yes man. I heard a lot of them just kind of go with. Okay, Nas, you like it? I love it. Um, again, I don't know if that's true. That's just what I've heard, and I've heard that. Uh, you know, not a lot of people question him. Like, bro, you sure you want to choose this beat? They just kind of roll with it. Um, what else? Uh, I've heard that Nas is an egomaniac. <laughs> I've heard uh, he doesn't want the beat to outshine him. Um, I saw uh, an interview on the Big Big Face Gary show with uh, shout out to Big Face Gary uh, with Tragedy Gaddafi, and, and Tragedy Gaddafi was just basically saying um, what I mentioned earlier, like, well, this, but, but more explicit, he was just saying how Nas looks at beats as like a blank canvas, and it's just organically he goes with the flow. So, there isn't one particular sound he may be looking for. Um, I will say this. Um, I thought the production... Let's go down the list. Let's run the gamut. Production on Illmatic. A1. Yeah, Pete Rock. Uh, LES. DJ Premier. Q-Tip. Uh, production was solid. It was written. It was dope. I thought the production on It Was Written was solid. I mean, I know people who think It Was Written was better than Illmatic. It is what it is. Uh, I am. I am was cool. He had. Uh, I want to say. Let's who, who did he have one here? I can't remember who the producers on. I am. Uh, he had track master. Wait, he had track masters on. Uh, it was written too. Um, the thing that kind of uh, messed me up is. Uh, I don't know why. I felt like Nas should have kept working with Pete Rock, and for whatever reason that stopped. Uh, but let's see, on I Am, he had L.E.S., Trackmasters, Timbaland, Dame Grease, Nasheen Myrick. Um, these are solid producers. I think I Am was straight. Um, now, Nostradamus? Eh, I can't really co-sign a production on Nostradamus. Um, he had Dame Grease, L.E.S., Havoc, Primo, Timbaland. Um... Yeah, the production on... I mean, I'm going to just keep it a buck. The, the the production on Nostradamus was not good to me. Um, throughout this whole tenure, what? From from 94, Illmatic, up to 99, Nostradamus. Uh, bar for bar, Nas never fell off. Production consistent, hella solid. Um, 
but up it's up until Nostradamus. When he got to Nostradamus, eh, it was I I don't again his penmanship was always on point, but the production on Nostradamus it was a, a hard pass for me. Um, next album, Stillmatic. Uh, I thought the production on Stillmatic was dope. You had uh, got get, got your get your what got yourself a gun. Uh, Megahertz did production, Primo, Hangman 3, LES, Large Pro, Ron Brown, Salon Remy. Shout out to Salon Remy. Salon Remy is dope. And I really wish Nas had did more work with Salon Remy. Um, yeah, Stillmatic was dope. Stillmatic is classic. Uh, from the bars to the concepts. Uh, what was it? Uh, that song Rewind. Uh, like, And I think Game later uh, paid homage and did his own version on his uh, most recent album. But anyway, Stillmatic was dope. Uh, Lost Tapes was hard. Lost Tapes was the next album. He had production by L.E.S., uh, Poke and Tone, uh, Rock Wilder, Al West. Lost Tapes was dope. Um, Godson. Godson was hard. Came out in 2002. Um, let's see, who, we, who do you have on here? Um, Production-wise, he had uh, The Alchemist. The Alchemist is one of the goats to me. The Alchemist, uh, I mean, he just got nominated for the Grammy. Shout out to the Alchemist and Freddie Gibbs for the um, for the uh, Alfredo project. Um, Alchemist, sonically, I think he's I think he's brilliant. I think his his sound, the, the the landscape of his sound is not limited to one area. Like he can go back and forth. I can, I've heard beats and I and I didn't even think that was an Alchemist beat. Come to find out it was. So his sound, his soundscape is very diverse. Uh, Chucky Thompson, again, uh, Eminem. I think, yeah, Eminem did, uh, what was that song? Hold up, hold up, hold up. Uh, Eminem did uh, The Cross. The Cross is one of the best songs on um, uh, Godson. The Cross was dope. Uh, I know, uh, shout out to Knife Wonder, I know he did his own... Uh, version of this album with his own beats called God Stepson. I thought that was hard. If you haven't heard that, go check that out. Knife Wonder, God Stepson. Uh, over Nas vocals. Uh, let's see, what else we got? Um, God Son was A1. Streets Disciple? Uh, I hear production by uh, Buckwell, Salam Remy, L.E.S., uh, Herb Militant, um, the production on Streets Disciple, I don't think it was bad. I just think he would have been better off with just taking the best tracks and putting them on, putting them on one top, on one on one project instead of making it a double album. Um, I felt like the tracks weren't bad. There were some good ones. There were a lot of good ones. Nazareth Savage. Uh, I thought Thief's Thing was dope, but just overall it was very hit or miss for me production wise. That's just my opinion. Beats weren't terrible. I just expected more. Um, next one, 2006, Hip Hop Is Dead. Uh, I thought Hip Hop Is Dead was a dope album. He had Beats by Ye, um, Salon Remy, L.E.S., Dr. Dre, uh, Chris Webber even. Chris Webber did Blunt Ashes. So to Detroit. Um, Hip Hop Is Dead was good. I thought the beats were on that was solid. Uh, the Nas album initially supposed to be called the, I think it was supposed to be called the, the N-I-G-G-E-R album, but he ended up calling it Nas. A lot of kickback. Uh, I thought that album was good. The production was good. Green Lantern did his thing. Cool and Dre did their thing. Uh, Jay Electronica did his thing. Polo the Don did his thing. Salon Remy. Production on uh, on not on uh, NAS on the Nas album was dope. Uh, let's go back. Let's fast forward. Actually, I won't count Distant Relatives because that wasn't a um, technically that was not a solo. That was a collaborative joint. Um, Let's see. Um, the list, you know, I can go on and on with Nas. Um, as far as his albums, um, let's go to Life from. So we left Hip Hop Is Dead to Nas to Life Is Good. Life Is Good was a dope project. I thought uh, the the production was good. He had. Um, who do you have on there production wise? He had the Justice League. He had No ID. Uh, Salam Remy again, Swizz. I thought uh, Life is Good was a dope album. Uh, what else you got? Uh, the Nasir album. Uh, solely produced by Kanye. Um, I thought Nasir was a dope album, bar for bar. 
um, concepts, uh, production. I think the only issue I had with the Nasir album was uh, the sound quality could have been better. But overall, I thought Nasir was a dope album. Um, what else we got? Uh, Lost Tapes 2. Lost Tapes 2 was dope. Uh, it dropped last year. It had uh, production by Ye, DJ Khalil, DJ Tomp, uh, Alchemist, RZA, among many others. Um, it was dope. I, I thought Lost Tapes 2 was dope. Um, let's see. The last album, the most recent album that Nas dropped, King's Disease, I thought it was dope. I enjoyed the, the production. Um, this album is actually nominated for a Grammy, so salute to Nas. Uh, some of the producers on this track were, well, no, the, the this album was entirely produced by Hit Boy. Shout out to Hit Boy. Hit Boy had a hell of a year. He uh, did some stuff for Benny the Butcher. Uh, who else did Hit Boy work with this year? Uh, can't remember who else, but he's been he's been on, on track doing his thing this year. He did uh, Racks in the Middle for Nipsey, R.I.P. Nipsey. Um, but I'm, I'm saying all this to say uh, Nas gets a lot of kickback for his production. Um, I think it could have been more consistent, but I think he had more. I think his production was better on average scale. Like if you just were put it on a scale, his production was better. I think better than most people assume or most people think. Um, <laughs> I think Nas is just, again, he's more of a poet who just happens to who happens to write over beats, you know? Um, I think Nas, his mind frame is just different. I think he's very intelligent. Um, I, I think his his mind just goes most places other people's don't. And artistically, I think he just processes art differently. So his style of production is different, you know? Um, I, I'm not letting him off, I'm not letting him off the hook. I think, you know, his, Choice of beat, beat selection could have been better. I wish he had to work more with Primo. Um, work more with Pete Rock.